The first step is to choose a file name. We'll call this first part. Once the file is saved, we can import geometry. We'll first import the pocket NC vice and V axis table. Next, we can import the impeller model. The next step is to locate the turbine according to the vise. For this, select Align, then select the lowest ring on the turbine, and last, the center of rotation for the A and B axis. The pocket NC vise uses M4 set screws as gripper jaws. These will need to be moved to the appropriate location to grip the material which the turbine will be made from. The turbine will be made from an inch and a half cubed piece of material. This means that we need to locate the turbine three quarters of an inch from the edge of the gripper jaws. As you can see, the turbine is 0.811 inches from the center of the gripper jaw hole. To calculate the actual distance the turbine needs to be from the hole, add 0.75 inches to half the diameter of the hole. As you can see, the difference is only 0.0015 inches, so we won't need to adjust the turbine. We'll only need to move the gripper jaws. Within the tree, we can select individual components or multiple components. By selecting joints in rigid group 2, we can select the entire soft jaw to move. Select both M4 set screws, right click, and select move. We will need to move these 30 millimeters in order to be aligned with the last set of holes. Now let's move the soft jaw. Select rigid group 2, select components, Right click on the components and click move. We need to move the soft jaw about 0.9 inches. We can hide one of the M4 gripper jaws in order to more accurately measure between the center of the turbine and the soft jaw. To hide the component, select the light bulb next to the component. The distance from the center of the soft jaw gripper jaw should be 0.8125 from the center of the turbine. As you can see, the current distance is 0.8908. We will need to subtract 0.8125 from that number in order to get the correct distance. Reselect all soft jaw components, select move, and move them 0.0783, and check that the distance is correct. The next step is to adjust the height of the turbine from the vise. Our stock will sit about one and a half inches from the top of the vise. So we'll want to measure about 1.45 inches from the top of the turbine to the top of the vise. As you can see, the turbine needs to be raised up about 0.45 inches. To move the turbine, select the component within the tree and select move.
Next, we will need to create geometry for the machining operations. Select Construct Offset Plane. Now select the top of the impeller. We will need to draw seven segments on top of this plane. Before you do that, you'll need to create an axis through the center of the impeller. To do so, select Construct Axis Through Cylinder. Now select the center of the impeller. As you can see, an axis was generated through the center of the impeller. To draw the segments, first select Sketch, then Line, then select the plane we just created. The first segment will be from the center of the impeller. You can make it about one inch long. To create the other six segments, select Sketch, Circular Pattern. Now the segment and the center of rotation will need to be selected. Change the quantity to 7. The 7 segments we just created will be used to orient the Z, or the tool, in the machining operation. Next we will need to create a plane perpendicular to each segment. To do this, select Construct Plane Tangent to Face at Point. Now select the face of the impeller and the point at the end of the segment. Repeat this step for the remaining six planes. The last thing we need to do before we can create tool paths is to create containment boundaries on the planes we just made. Before we create our containment boundaries, we'll go ahead and turn off all of the unused construction planes. To create the containment boundary, select the construction plane, then select Sketch, Rectangle, and Two Points. The purpose of the containment boundary is to keep the tool from the bottom of the impeller. Start the containment boundary about a quarter of an inch below the impeller. Leave excess room on the other three sides. Repeat this process for the remaining six sides. Once the seven containment boundaries are complete, you can move on to the machining section.